everyone to our new knowledge series. My name is Kathy Lowe, Executive Director of Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator. And today we are very excited to have Tyler Bailey, who is a customer service specialist with uh, Food City. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Tyler. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Like, like she was saying, my name is Tyler Bailey. Uh, I'm an assistant store manager for KVAT Food Stores, Food City. Uh, I was born and raised actually in Admin, went to Admin High School, graduated in 2008, where after that I went on to uh, study kinesiology at the College of William and Mary over in Williamsburg, Virginia. And uh, upon graduating, I moved back and had the opportunity to do an internship with uh, KVAT Food Stores as a retail manager and was in the stores, learned a little bit about the operations and at the completion of that internship I had the opportunity to move down to Knoxville, Tennessee to where I'm, that's where I currently live and I'm in the assistant store manager training program to hopefully one day uh, have the opportunity to run my own store. Uh, it's a great opportunity. I was kind of hesitant at first to you know, try and do something completely new because I had the mindset uh, upon graduating that I was going to go to grad school and work my way up in the athletic department of a, a Division I university. But things change. And I uh, was nervous about this, but I believe I found my niche because I love working around people so much that this uh, position with Food City, being around faces every single day in the grocery store, has given me that opportunity. Um, I'm going to be speaking to you today about customer service and a little brief part of what I'll be talking about is a uh, table of contents and I'm going to talk about what is customer service as well as uh, the important core values of customer service that I believe are important uh, in establishing relationships that are going to help you build a successful business. Uh, I'm also going to talk to you about teaching a standard. Uh, as far as, um, you know, practices that are uh, laid out to you when you're first hired by a company or when you're trying to start your own company, uh, as well as knowledge of your company's service. And, and finally, uh, the last step I'll be talking about is customer service experience at Food City and how we try and help separate ourselves to provide a better service for our customers. And with further ado, I'll get into our first step and talk about, you know, what is customer service? It's a, it's a very broad definition, and depending on where you work and what you do, that, that definition can certainly vary. Uh, you have your, your customer is always right approach where, uh, you know, that customer is, is wanting whatever they want, no matter how rational or irrational that reason uh, may be. You know, they, they can be, you can please them all you want, but until you give them what what they want, nothing, nothing's going to change. So that's, that's where the customer is always right and you know you just got to hold your ground and talk to them and say, hey, I'm willing to make, make this right. What can I do to make it right? And if, you know, depending on how uh, argumentative they're wanting to be, uh, certainly uh, you want to diffuse that situation and allow them to have a better experience. So you know you always want to uh, be mindful and make sure that uh, they are right in some situations, and you're not you don't you, you do not want to uh, have any strain between those relationships. Uh, you know, some may view uh, customer service as just simply solving problems and offering solutions to a client with expedient feedback. You know, they just may be wanting to uh, have a quick solution, no, no matter how nice you are or whatever. They just they just want that quick solution. And uh, there isn't really a right or wrong answer. Uh, I promise you that. Customer service, like I said, it's very broad. But uh, I personally believe it's, it's a little bit more than just selling a product or providing answers about your company's service. Uh, yes, those are important, but to me it's about building positive relationships. Uh, relationships that have been built uh, that make the clients or customers stay loyal, and most importantly, trust you. Uh, I believe throughout this presentation, you will be able to take with you important steps 
that will enable you to build strong relationships with your customer as well as having a successful business. Uh, with that, my first core value is um, you want to make that customer feel welcome. Uh, and I st I'm going to start it with a quote because from Theodore Roosevelt and it says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that is imperative in any business. Uh, and that first step, whenever that customer walks through your door, your store, your company, they're going to be expected to be greeted. And that starts with a smile. It really does. Smiles are contagious. Uh, you want to start really an epidemic with smiling. It's imperative that they see uh, and know and feel that whenever they see you smile, they uh, that allows them to know that you are approachable and will be willing to answer any of their questions. Uh, when you greet Aaron Klein, it, re it reflects their, their passion for our service. No matter if we're in retail, uh, education, um, taxi service, as someone was going to say, it really does start with a smile, and it sets the tone for a good first impression. Uh, another uh, important aspect of customer service is, uh, you know, we're, like I said, our business depends on them. Uh, we uh, we can make we need to make them feel as if they are the most important part or that the most important person at that time. Um, and in order to gain that trust and build a positive relationship, their need needs to be our priority. And that's something that we, we can always get right, is focusing on making that customer feel important, smiling. That, that's, some, that's a part of customer service that we can always get right. Um, and with, with dealing with a client, you know, they, they, they expect quality service. Uh, your reputation and the companies are at stake. You have everything to gain by being friendly and helpful. Because, like I said, Customers choose what companies they invest in based on personal experience. They have, they can choose whatever store or service that they want to do business with, and you have everything uh, laid out for you. You got prices, uh, advertising, location, your service offer. You know that's something that will attract that customer once, but depending on how well their experience is while shopping, your friendliness, greeting the customer, making them feel important. That's what's going to keep bringing them back. And another important aspect of customer service is, uh, is listening. And that's my second step uh, in providing exceptional customer service. Uh, and I, I really do think this usually is the part of customer service that's directly correlated with uh, a complaint or confrontation. Uh, so it, it's important in this part of customer service uh, to, to listen to their needs, uh, especially being in the grocery store, I, I deal with complaints all the time as far as a wrong price or what they sell on the ad that's not right on the shelf. And when dealing with those situations, I'm, I'm having that mindset of creating multiple sol solutions for that customer's need. Uh, Having that solution, that if that if that first solution doesn't work out, then maybe I can fall back on the second solution, and I can address their needs right there because they're going to bring you their wants and needs. It's it's our job to fill it and make sure they're happy. That's uh, and by, and you want to ask open-ended questions. You know, you want to say, hey, tell me about this problem. Describe for me. You want to make sure that they are elaborating on that issue because that asking a close in the question is usually just going to get you a direct yes or no and you want to be able to elaborate to make sure that you're able to get that customer uh, the right service uh, and it's, it's important to stay patient as well you want to let that customer know that their time is in, uh, important and valuable and they would rather have competent service than be rushed out the door they would uh, it might not uh, be what they want immediately, but if you're able to dig in, get the right answers, stay patient, uh, they will, they'd much rather have competent service. And I'll give you an example. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all are in the restaurant industry, but we've all been in that situation before where we've had slow service. 
uh, and we're wanting to know where our food's at. We're getting impatient. We're getting hungry. And you know, uh, you know I think it, it, it's that option of the server that they can go one or two routes with it. They can get nervous and they can get scared and just kind of want to rush that family out the door and not apologize. Or what I think is the right step to do is to go up, tell them, listen, I'm sorry about the slow service today. We're having some uh, new trainings in our kitchen or whatever the uh, issue may be at hand. Uh, my store manager or my restaurant manager is about to come up and talk to you. And usually if, if it's a good business, then that manager is more than likely going to, you know, go out of his way and say, hey, because of the slow service, I sincerely apologize, but I'd be willing to give you a free dessert or a free appetizer on your next visit to this restaurant. And nine times out of ten, that customer, uh, I, I, I believe at least, that they might not be satisfied, but they at least will appreciate uh, the, the, the um, sincere apology. And uh, the, more than likely, they'll try that restaurant out. So, uh, and that, that still that stems from being empathetic. We've all been in that situation before uh, with slow service at a restaurant. So you want to be able to understand that situation at hand. And like I said, dealing with confrontation and uh, complaints, you know, you got to have pro good problem-solving skills. And you got to be able to, the uh, first step is to identify that problem. Because whenever there is a significant difference between what is happening and what should be happening, you know you have a problem, man. Um, when con confronted with an issue, it's, it's up to us to evaluate whether these complaints can be resolved easily and quickly, or if they indicate that they need further attention and are larger problems that are beyond our uh, reason to solve them. We're going to have to go to the person next above. So, it's up to us to identify whether they need that attention or not. And that step, don't make the customers wait. Uh, they want quick solutions. Uh, but with that, um, and I said, touched on that last slide about being patient. Uh, yes, you want to be patient to get all the, the right complaints initially. But when all that is uh, concluded and you're trying to find the right answer, you got to be quick because they want quick solutions. I promise you that. And uh, it's important to treat customers as individuals. You know, when you uh, a genuine concern or a helping hand goes a long way in person-to-person -person interaction. They want you to know that you genuinely care, and they're not just a number as that customer coming in and out. They want you to know that their time is important. And uh, a very important part of problem solving is. It's being true to your word. You might not be able to get that answer right away, uh, but uh, when you provide something to another person or agree to provide something, you know that that lets them know that um, we expect you to provide that. And when you tell someone that I'll take care of it, or I'll have that answer to you at the end of the day, or I'll give you a phone call, they'll regard that as a promise. And when that problem isn't followed through, you're more than likely going to lose that trust of that customer and they will not shop at or, or use your business anymore. So it's important to be true to your word. Do you all have a set standard in how long or what the procedure is if an co employee receives a complaint? If, normally, are they able to, to offer a solution or do they need to get a supervisor? How normally many? our complaints are handled uh, depending on where they send that. If they send it to our corporate offices, that person responsible uh, will directly forward that email or that complaint to our supervisor, uh, usually our district manager, who then in return will uh, contact uh, the associate that or whoever was responsible or department for that complaint. Mm -hmm. And from there, uh, they will come up with a solution to contact that customer by phone, by email, to try and make it right. What if I'm in the store and I come up to the cashier, let's say, and I'm upset over something? What Do you all have a system in place for that? Well, if a front-end manager can handle that uh, issue, then we'll go through that. If it needs further ado, we'll get the managers involved. And they will more than likely usually come up 
uh, with a um, solution for that. A lot of times uh, when we're dealing with uh, issues with cashiers, it's all, a majority of that is pricing issues mm -hmm. at our store. It's, well, I saw the price back there. Yeah. Is, and we, we go back and check to make sure, because we have multiple sizes for our products. It might be the same product or it might be out of place. And, um, or a wrong sticker to be honest. Or a wrong sticker, exactly. Because I used to work for Food City, so. Absolutely, and that's what, a wrong sticker, wrong price. And that, if, um, if we have a wrong price on a sticker, more than likely, uh, well, 99% of the time, we're going to worship whichever the lower price is because that's what they saw. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, it just depends. If it goes through the front end manager and needs further attention, the store manager will, will deal with that. Um, and a very important step with uh, making or not making the customers wait is don't be afraid to ask for help. If you, if you don't know the answer, say, I don't know, but I will go find out for you. That way we can get you uh, the right service. And one of my biggest fears as a manager is having a new employee, I'll say a 16-year-old cashier, it's their first job, they're, they're not really sure um, how to handle a question about locating an item. One of my biggest fear is having that associate have a fear and scared to be embarrassed because they don't know where that product is. So that's why when it gets to their best practices, it's important to make them feel as if they are, um, if they know their service and they, making them feel comfortable to where they're not afraid to ask for help. So that's something that we stress all the time to our new employees is don't be afraid to ask for help. And it really doesn't matter if they're a new employee or if someone working in the produce department needing a grocery answer. They uh, want more time, or more than likely, if you create that feeling between administrator and associate, uh, a good positive sentiment, then they're usually not afraid to ask for help. And that's something that is very important. This is just a little sample data uh, uh, that was uh, I found through Forbes magazine, which is a, a highly uh, published business magazine. And it was through the dimensional research, which specializes, specializes in tech, the, technology, the, the technology industry. And what they thought when surveying customers, they said, what specifically made these customer service interactions good? And the first one they said was the problem was resolved quickly. 69% of those customers said the problem was resolved quickly. Uh, what I was talking about, about making the customer feel welcome, I think this next 65% uh, of them said the customer who helped me was nice. Uh, it's very important to, like I said, making sure that that customer feels welcome and they're a very important part of your, your business. Um, the next one, 63% said the problem was resolved in one interaction, no passing around and multiple people. And I, I believe I can speak for everybody when everybody had to deal with a uh, cable provider, AT&T, uh, Verizon, Comcast. Comcast, absolutely. When you, I, my, I was on the phone with AT&T the other day trying to cancel one part of my service and was on hold for 45 minutes and talked to someone for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And they passed me along to someone else who, and then they didn't know the answer, which brought me back to the main menu. And I was like, well, I'm not going to resolve this unless I go to the store itself and still not resolve. But uh, that's another part of customer service is just get in one interaction. That stems to that last point with uh, the customer or the outcome was what I originally was hoping for when I contacted customer service. And I know that's 47% of the customers said that whenever I called with my original problem, that outcome was answered right there instead of being passed along. And, there's a lot of uh, statistics out there, but I felt like this one was pretty spot on with the resolving uh, problems quickly and, and being nice to customers. And I felt that goes along with any service. And this is a big one with uh, providing exceptional customer services. You want to have effective communication between customer and uh, business associate. And First step is using terminology that the customers understand. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a kinesiology major uh, from William & Mary. I 
I dealt with the human anatomy and studying health ethics in the medical field. I'm not going to know a lot about uh, accounting if I come to you with my taxes. So I want to, I want to need to know terminolo terminology that you know, it helps me feel uh, at ease and understanding of uh, that business or that service. And uh, on top of uh, the terminology when dealing with face-to-face -face, uh, customer service is uh, the nonverbal communication. Uh, the way you listen, look, move, and react can indicate to a customer how much you really care. It, it really does. If you got your hands in your pocket and slouch down, they're going to realize, all right, this customer or this person's not really into uh, helping me. Um, and it sometimes speaks the loudest. Nonverbal communication sometimes speaks the loudest when trying to connect with others, expressing how you really feel, and ultimately building better relationships with your customers. It goes a long way. Um, another uh, way of uh, effectively communicating is uh, having two-way communication. You always want to be in constant, constant communication with your superiors and different levels of personnel. They need to be in constant communication. Manager to associate and or associate to customer or client. Uh, it's very important that uh, Air bosses are promoting, uh, I'll give an example of the grocery industry. Uh, if, air, if we're having a new ad come up that says, hey, we're going to be, uh, customers can redeem some gas visits and get 10% off of their groceries. Uh, air, air bosses need to communicate that with the managers so we can communicate that to the uh, cashiers who then can communicate that to our customers. And, it's very important that you're in constant communication because the last thing you want to do is look foolish and not know your product. And it's very, very, very important. And the last one about communication, I think it speaks for itself, is the power of social media. Uh, with over a billion Facebook users, count, or close to a billion users on Twitter, it's a very, very effective way to promote offerings, uh, pr provide service about deals that you're uh, going to be uh, uh, providing in the next couple weeks, months, days. Uh, it's a very powerful uh, way to provide free marketing because it doesn't cost a thing to sign up for Facebook and start a, a fan page or a business page or sign up for Twitter. It's, it's free marketing and with that free marketing and that free service and over a billion users. Uh, not only can you provide positive interactions, but you're also going to get negative feedback as well. And negative feedback, uh, obviously no business wants that, but it provides the opportunity to make things right. Uh, our responses to negative feedback, uh, at least at Food City, we want to make sure that they're quick well thought, and they're effectively handled to where we're going to make sure that customer comes back to our store and we're able to provide them with the service that they need. So with negative feedback, we're able to uh, take that time to make it an opportunity to make things right. And the last thing on social media, I don't have it on there, but it's, it's important, uh, especially as a small business uh, and trying to make it into a bigger uh, business, you want to have associates that are aware of your policies and procedures and making sure that they are uh, not representing your company in a negative way on what they post. Obviously, you know, you're know you not in control of what they post, but uh, you can provide that and your best practices that say, hey, you represent our company. Uh, make sure that you, uh, you don't post anything negatively because usually that's going to result in uh, you know, some punishment as well. So it's important that they are aware of social media, uh, how to effectively use it, uh, and, you know, not tarnishing your company's name. And a very, my last step with the core values of important uh, steps in customer service is appreciative. Being appreciative of uh, the your customers and taking the initiative to get to know your customer. You want to make it personal between them. Uh, if you know a little bit about them, uh, it has everything. It's a very powerful tool to uh, 
increase that loyalty uh, between business and customer. Uh, and, I, and I'm a very big proponent of, of doing the little things. Uh, how many of y'all like to write handwritten notes? All right. That goes a long, long way. And show, it's a lost art. It really is. Uh, I enjoy writing handwritten notes, uh, no matter if it's going out with someone on lunch, uh, knowing, or if it's a customer, thanking them for their service. I love handwritten notes, and it, it, it goes a further, uh, it's further along than, you know, just sending a simple text. Yes, I mean, it's showing appreciation through a text, phone call, email, is valuable, but a handwritten note really lets that customer know that, wow, they really did take the time to show their appreciation, and, and it's a good step. Uh, following up with customers, that doesn't necessarily mean about uh, following up with a product or service. You just let them know, hey, uh, you know, I was thinking about you the other day and I was wondering how your, your, your spouse is doing with their sickness. You know, the little things like that it goes a long way taking going that extra mile and showing that appreciation for that customer. Uh, it really helps and benefits your service. And uh, knowing your customer's individual personal preference. You know, I, I'll give an example. Uh, in our bakery deli, uh, one of the stores I was just working at, there's uh, they had what we call the breakfast club. There's a bunch of uh, elderly men that come in each morning, and they uh, they just sit down and eat breakfast. And it's almost like a, a coffee shop or a barber shop, but that's at, it's at the grocery store. And air cooks, air servers, they know what they want. It might not be on the hot bar, but they know uh, that person's going to want two packs of sugar with that coffee, uh, with one pack of creamer. It's little things like that that really separates yourself from how well. Uh, you know your customers. Um, and, and lastly, remembering their names. Uh, that goes, uh, that's extremely imperative uh, between the relationship of customer and business. If you deal with them a lot and you still can't remember that name, uh, it, it makes it difficult to make it personal. And uh, I, I think it's an important tool of uh, being appreciative of your customers. Uh, and after the, the customer service uh, core values, I believe, uh, you know, what we're talking about with um, teaching a standard. And when you're, when you're first hired by a company or you first start a company, it, it, you want to create uh, a best practices standard, policy and procedure manuals that you know, really lay out the, uh, the procedures for that company and how, how you want to run it. And, um, you know, when, when, you, when you do that, it, uh, it allows you to really step back and say, hey, all right, I want to provide good service. I want to have uh, customers, you know, coming in and out. And you want to, you want to have customers uh, and let them know that they are the most important person in that business. We're, we're dependent upon them to have success. And by doing that, uh, by facilitating success uh, when you're starting your company, you want to set high standards for yourself and most importantly your, your customers because when you have employees that are willing to go the extra mile and take pride in their job and their service to customers it becomes contagious and really rubs off on all those around so it's important to have the right people at the right job or try to have the right people at the right job that's going to really uh, benefit that customer to business relationship so it's very important to have high standards and, uh, you know, your, your business is only as good as your customer's last experience. It, it is, and you want to create that positive sentiment that whenever they leave that store and they think about your service, it creates that positive sentiment and really it triggers a good feeling. And that, that just goes with good customer service is the significant other to a great product, and I truly believe that. Um, and lastly, it's... Uh, you want to have knowledge of the service that you provide. Uh, you want to know more than what that customer knows. And, you know, it, it, it goes for all uh, fields and industries. If you're selling cars, you know, know the features and specifications of that models you have. And if you really want to go that extra mile and take the next step, know your, uh, know your competitors and what they sell and how to separate yourselves from that. If you're in the hotel industry, you know, know Know what time uh, 
know the history of the building, know how many floors you have, how many rooms you have, how much, uh, uh, what time breakfast is served, what time happy hour starts. It's all important in making sure that that customer and that client are, are happy with the services that you provide. And what I'm going to talk about now is uh, the customer service experience at Food City. I, uh, I'm very proud to work for a company that puts so much effort and a strong emphasis on being involved in the community and giving back. Uh, we've, we've tried to create uh, trust with our customers and in our operating states of Kentucky, uh, Virginia, and Tennessee. Uh, we, we try to create that customer service experience that's going to keep them coming back. And with that, uh, we're going to talk about you know, our involvement in the community. It's a very important aspect. It's what this company was built off of. Uh, it started as, as a one-store business in Grundy, Virginia in the 1950s. One store. And our, uh, our founder, Mr. Jack Smith, he... Uh, he came home from World War II, history of how the company started, he came home from World War II, was having trouble trying to find a job, went to a little mom and pop store in Grundy, Virginia, and was waiting in line for groceries, and it took him 45 minutes to get through the register and check out, and when he went home, he told his parents, I think I know what I can do. I can provide service to our community. With that, Food City was started in Grundy, Virginia. And it's, it's, uh, we, we've tried to give back to our community. That's an important tool on how we operate. Uh, it's, uh, we're we're going to try and earn that trust through certain um, programs. And I'll touch a little bit more on locally grown product, the Santa Train, here in a little bit, and other slides. Uh, the School Bucks is a program where we're able to uh, provide our customers with the opportunity to um, use some of their money in the transaction to donate to a particular school uh, that Food City will uh, redeem and give to that school. And since its inception in the early 90s, Food City has given back 16750000 to area schools. And that, that's, that's awesome. And um, it goes a long way in helping uh, schools uh, buy new books, uh, implement new technology, uh, it, it's really been a benefit to help us establish that relationship with the community and our area schools. Um, I'll touch a little bit on Mission Able in a little bit. Uh, the Claude P. Barney Award is an award given to our associates that uh, really stand out uh, with their community service. And that was, uh, we have several, uh, we have awards for that. Uh, the Claude P. Barney Award for uh, Tri-Cities Division, the Knoxville Division, and our overall company winner. And uh, it really just uh, goes to show that our customers, when they're hired at Food City, they, uh, you know, they don't just want to help out our customers at the store. They're willing to give back to their community, be it the Special Olympics, uh, we're helping out at the local food pantry. You know, they, they want to go out outside of their way uh, to help give back and provide uh, a positive experience for uh, the, the community. Uh, Project Help is something that we do. It's in Knoxville. Uh, working in Knoxville, uh, I'm uh, involved with it at the stores. Uh, it's, it's not really our project, but we're, we partner with uh, Knoxville Utilities Board to uh, give customers a chance at, their, at the register to donate one dollar um, and in return Project Help uh, is able to give back heat and uh, provide uh, warm clothes to those uh, customers and the people in the community that uh, really, really need it. And it, it's, a, it's a cool way to help give back uh, by just donating a dollar at the register. And we also want to earn the trust by uh, our loyalty points. Uh, we do the, the value visits at the gas pump where we are able to uh, if customers, whenever they buy stuff in our stores, we're, they're able to work up points. To, if they get to 150 points for every dollar that you spend, you earn a point. If they're able to get up to 150, then that earns them a gas visit where they're able to get 15 cents uh, off a gallon 
up to 20 gallons. And then on Wednesdays, we do a win-win Wednesdays where uh, they can redeem two gas visits and get 30 cents off a gallon up to 20 gallons. So it's a way that we want to give back to our, our customers for thanking them uh, for their service. And it goes a long way. Um, with the locally grown product, uh, one way that I think is a real cool uh, program that we do is uh, we're able to give back to our local economy and help farmers uh, sell their, their product in their grocery store. Um, in return, they are able to, to profit. And it's one thing that Food City implements that, hey, we could, uh, we could get our you know, tomatoes and all that from California. But instead, we want to help out the local farmers and help them get their product in, their sto in our stores so they can make a profit. And, and by being local and staying local, uh, we're able to get it in our stores in a quick way to provide the freshest product available. Uh, I know uh, around uh, Knoxville, and I'm sure in the Tri-Cities area as well, uh, you know, customers all the time, especially in the summer months, they're coming out there saying, hey, where's this uh, tomato at? Do you have this certain product uh, from this farm? And um, it, we're able to get that right in the stores, right from, basically you're picking it right from the vine. And we can provide fresh product. Um, having locally grown product, I mentioned on getting product from another uh, state, uh, we're able to be more eco-friendly by having locally grown product in our stores. You know, we don't, we don't have to, it saves fuel. We don't have to haul tomatoes from California. Uh, instead, we can have uh, our stores uh, call Scott's Farm in Unicoi County and get fresh hand-picked strawberries, which are probably the most locally, or most uh, most or customers really want that. They they call all the time and they ask about uh, Scott strawberries and it, it, it's a fast seller. Let me tell you, they uh, once they go to the shop, they're usually gone by that day, and we got to get more in the next morning. Um, and uh, it, and also by being locally uh, grown, we're able to have our produce managers uh, go to these farms and see the step-by-step -step harvesting procedures and how, how it works to where they can come back to our stores and uh, educate our customers as, and our associates uh, about, about that service and how it works. And, uh, you know, it goes a long way in just, uh, you know, making that cut that relationship, building a positive relationship between customer and business. The Santa Train. It, uh, it's one of the most humbling experiences that I've ever been a part of. And uh, every, right in between the holidays, between November and, uh, and December, uh, we partner with the Kingsport Chamber of Commerce and CSX Transportation. And we, we do it at the Kingsport store um, right near Dobbins Bend on Eastman Road. And it's really cool to see uh, not just your associates coming in uh, to help, but also the people in their community that come in to help put together 15 tons of totes, or 15 tons of toys, clothing, and candies to distribute uh, on a train that goes from Shelbyana, Kentucky to Kingsport, Tennessee. And we make, I think, 15 stops along the way to uh, children and families. Um, and it's, it's a cool way to, to show appreciation for our residents, and it was really cool to, to be a part of that process and uh, seeing everybody coming together for a good cause. And uh, not a cut with customer service at Food City, I, I think with what we try and teach uh, our associates to, to handle um, best practices with our customers, it, it rubs off in a way that uh, we don't necessarily have to uh, have a planned community service project. Uh, in this slide, uh, you know, we recently, with all the snowstorms and the flooding uh, that's been going on throughout southwest Virginia and, and eastern Kentucky, uh, we had a store manager uh, in Big Stone Gap in Appalachia that saw this lady on the news that had had her uh, steps damaged as well as the heating uh, had um, messed up. So just out of the kindness of his heart, he uh, 
was able to get a few store managers together and they, they felt the need to help this person and they went over, uh, this was a couple weekends ago, uh, these were the steps that were tarnished and they were, uh, kind of, they were saying that if you basically took one step down it was just going to collapse. So they, uh, bought, or they uh, got rid of those and they built her a brand new uh, set of steps as well as uh, they fixed the heating in her house and it just goes to show that we want to you want to have the right people in the right place with the right mindset to uh, not only uh, give back to what Food City does, but actually go out of their own way and help uh, provide um, good interactions between the uh, community within the community. Mission Able is a program developed to assist paralyzed veterans, uh, and we help. Uh, ensure health benefits uh, are accessible, and uh, it also gives them uh, financial assistance uh, with those benefits. And Food City allows customers at the register to donate uh, an amount of one, three, or five dollars uh, for that uh, project. And we are, are in 2013, it's right here, uh, we were able to donate 135,000 to Mission Able. Uh, that's our CEO with um, Richard Petty, who's the face of Mission Able, he's the one that really goes out and promotes uh, what they do. And uh, we were able to give 135000 in 2013 and make a check of 100000 in 2014. And overall, in the past uh, three years, we've been able to raise $375,000 to the paralyzed veterans of America. And Food City is very... Uh, adamant about giving back to the people who serve uh, for our country and provide our freedoms. And uh, we, uh, we do this every year and I think it's going to continue to be something that builds for us. Uh, with, with that, um, not only do we provide uh, you know, area, the local area with um, you know, projects to help give back, but I, I believe we're able to uh, give back to our community by providing uh, you know, some good entertainment and you know we're, we're a sponsor of the Food City 500 and each each uh, each twice a year will be coming up in April and it'll be coming up in August as well we do what we call Food City Race Night and it continues to get bigger and bigger each year where we're able to give back to our customers and our, and our fans and uh, provide them with entertainment, food, and fun, and thanking them for their loyalty service. And they, with that, in return, they're able to meet their favorite NASCAR drivers as well as uh, their favorite teams. And it's held twice a year in downtown Bristol and, and uh, in Knoxville at the Expo Center. And it's just a way to show our appreciation and give back to our customers and provide them with some good entertainment. Uh, another thing that we have coming forward in the next year is uh, we're going to be uh, the main sponsor of the Battle of Bristol between Virginia Tech and Tennessee. And growing up uh, as a football player, playing in college, um, and being a UT fan, sorry, sorry Hokie fans, uh, we're going to be able to provide an uh, area with opportunity. And I, I'd imagine being an admin in Bristol, it's split between Blacksburg and Knoxville, and there's going to be a, large, a lot of people there that's going to be able to witness the largest crowd for, for a college football game. It's really, really uh, something that we're all excited about as a company and can't wait for September 13, 2016. Uh, the, and the last step with Food City is uh, not only is the, do we value the importance of giving back to our community and trying to earn the, cup, the trust of the community, but uh, our personal services in the store is something that we stress and try and, and get right every single day. And our mission, our goal, uh, you, we see it in every handbook, every manual, is at the top of that page, first page, it says uh, you want to help run the best store in town. And by running the best store in town, uh, we have steps uh, to reach that mission. And uh, when customers are first hired, uh, it becomes subconscious after a while to where you don't even think about it. And uh, our, our first thing that we, we tell our new hires is uh, the 10-foot rule. Uh, when you're 10 foot away from the customer, you make eye contact, you smile. 
when you get to eight foot, you greet that person. When you get to six foot, is there anything I can do for you today? And then from there, you're able to make that interaction with that customer to where you let them know that you are approachable and you can help with what they're wanting to locate. Um, a rainy day policy. Uh, has anybody been to our stores and uh, had the opportunity of having a, a, a courtesy clerk on a rainy day walk them out with an umbrella? I've been asked I've before. Okay, well, every uh, anytime it's raining at the store, we have a courtesy clerk stand up at the lobby with a rain jacket and an umbrella and uh, after the customer or after the courtesy clerk on the register asks them if they need help out and they say yes then they point them in direction with a guy in the umbrella or the, or the lady for that matter and um, they're able to walk them out to their car to their vehicles with an umbrella so they don't get wet and what do you think would be the most popular customer uh, to ask for that service? Elderly? Elderly, but that's actually second. Women. Young women that have children. And that they, uh, all the time, they send in uh, their appreciation to either the store or to our corporate offices about, I appreciate you taking um, me out to my store so, my, so myself and my child would not get wet. Uh, the young women, it's very popular uh, service for them. Uh, and we also have this. Uh, uh, for our associates to where we do everyone speaks to everybody every day and uh, we have what we call warm fuzzies and what that is is uh, basically compliments uh, you never know what type of uh, day your associate or for that or for a customer is having so by going up to them telling them hey how's your day going uh, I appreciate you for what you did yesterday for that customer. It can go a long way if that person's having a bad day to so turning it around. Um, and, and in return, they're, they're going to be able to you know, build a little bit more confidence to where they can, to, their day is turned around to where they're going to be able to uh, provide the best service for that customer. So uh, we, we, every day, uh, because as a manager um, and as someone who's starting their own business, you set the tone every day. Uh, you do, and when they walk, when you walk in the store and they see if you're upset or not, it's going to affect them. And so you really you set the tone for how the business is going to go the rest of the day, uh, because you're you're the leader, you're you're in charge, and uh, what you do affects them. Uh, now we like to get our, to know our customers, uh, and that that's especially uh, important uh, with the value card. Uh, we have a value card that's linked to customers that will display their name at the register for a more personal touch. We're able to say, did you find everything today, Mr. Smith? Did you find everything, Mrs. Jones? Uh, it creates that personal touch to where we're able to see their name at the register and we can address them in that manner. Um, it's linked, the value card is linked to previous purchases for rewards. Uh, we can look back and uh, on their value card, uh, we're able to see how much uh, or what they buy, what their most popular purchase is, and we're able to send them uh, through text message, uh, through the mail, through email, um, discounts for you know, if that customer likes to buy a lot of cat food uh, or a lot of Libby's vegetables. Uh, we're able to uh, provide that service to where we can uh, give them rewards uh, for their uh, most popular purchases. Um, we like, to, we like to keep in touch with our customers, uh, and this is based on location. So uh, in Abingdon, in Bristol, uh, uh, there's multiple stores in Bristol, but around that range, we're able to get a top 100 uh, customer report once a month uh, that shows who shopped the most and who, and, um, who didn't shop as, as much as you would have liked at that store. So with that, we're able to uh, show appreciation like I was talking about and the core values. We're able to uh, write them a letter, give them a call. Uh, if we see them in the store and we know their face, we're able to uh, thank them for uh, shopping with us and for the people that don't shop with us as, as much or we've kind of lost their business. We're able to uh, uh, contact them and trying to get them back in their stores. And it's a great tool to, uh, to help connect with them. 
speaking of the value card, Tyler, have, have y'all, uh, do you have any numbers on how much your sales increased when you started offering on, is it Wednesdays you get double? Wednesdays is when we get double discount days. Have yes. Uh, so with uh, the value visits, uh, what we were able to do, uh, we changed it at the beginning of uh, the, the year. Uh, our ad breaks now, or it's been since last July where we break on Wednesdays, our new ad. So on, um, but on Fridays, since we started the double discounts, uh, customers were coming in like crazy for the gas business. So at the beginning of the year, we, we decided to switch it back to where it breaks on our ad day on Wednesdays, to, and also to try and increase sales on uh, Wednesdays. So uh, the value visits, um, Wednesdays are, are very popular days uh, with their gas, and, and a lot of it also depends on location as well. Um, some stores are weekend busy stores. Uh, you know, they're going to get all their businesses or their business on on the weekends. Uh, I work for a store in Knoxville that uh, wasn't as busy on the weekends, but during the weekday it was a it was a low volume store, but. On weekdays, lunch, there was a lot of local businesses around, and we had a really, really good salad bar. And Mondays, the bakery deli, Monday through Friday, that bakery deli was slammed. So I always made it a point uh, when I worked at that store to, to be around that area around that time because that's when that, that was the, the, the peak of your business was lunchtime, Monday through Friday. So I made it a point to be up there around that area, greeting customers, asking them if they could find anything. Uh, and knowing your, knowing your business, uh, knowing when you, your peak hours are, it's very important as a leader to have a face during those times. Um, any idea though what, you're, what it's I, I, I don't have any numbers. Uh, I, I, I can see if I can get some, but at, at, at the moment I don't have those numbers. I suspect a lot of people do their gas fill-ups based on that. Did, did any of y'all know that we do them on Wednesdays now? Uh, I thought it was Friday. It was. That changed uh, at the beginning of, of the year, first week in January. Uh, well, I don't have a car right now, but I mean, uh, a lot oh, yeah. of people that drive me around, you know, I thought it was on Fridays. But I think it would probably benefit your business on Wednesday because everybody's like, okay, I have this much money to spend on my gas, and if I can get like a little discount Absolutely. in the middle of the week, and I got like two or three more days of work. Absolutely. And I, that's another benefit, too, of our pharmacy. You know, a lot of people, uh, we have seen, I don't know numbers, but we have seen an increase in our, farm, or in our grocery sales based on uh, our, our pharmacy uh, purchases because people are coming in to get uh, their medication, but they're in our store, and it's going to create a lot of impulse buys that whenever they get their prescription, they're walking, and, oh, I think I need that, or I need that. It's, great. it's increased our sales, too, with our pharmacy, uh, the grocery sales, that is. And um, another thing that we do at our stores is we, we, we want to create a lot of family-friendly events. And usually every week uh, or every weekend, there are a lot of stores uh, doing special promotions. Uh, we, we do a kid's day where we're able to set up stuff uh, and provide music and food out in uh, store parking lots and uh, trampolines or the jumpy uh, things that the kids jump on. Uh, we do Kids Day, we have face painting, uh, and it's a, it's a cool thing to, to help bring that, cu or that customer to your service. Um, we do a holiday open house where uh, we're able to provide our customers with what we're going to be selling in the upcoming months, so planning ahead is a very important step uh, with providing exceptional customer service. And we always do this at the beginning of November, really right before the, the holidays are about to kick in. We let them know, hey, this is what we're going to be selling in the next couple months. Uh, we do Earth Day where we provide a education uh, uh, to our customers of, about uh, taking care of the uh, environment and recycling. Uh, we do that every May or around Earth Day. Uh, we do a Halloween costume contest. Um, and we do community cleanups, which in some areas where, you know, the, the, it's kind of, um, I guess, been effective. Like, for instance, over uh, with the flooding and the snowstorms. Uh, we do community cleanups where we, we try and reach out to our customers and let them know, hey, on this date, we're going to be doing a community cleanup to try and 
to make this a, a, a better, friendly area. And we'll go around, we'll pick trash up, and we'll go to area parks. Uh, it, it really does help out in the, uh, the customer service uh, aspect of, you know, you're, you're outside the store, but you're giving back to that area community. And it's, it's a good thing to do. Uh, we, uh, we have race night, like I talked about. We also do elementary uh, school field trips where we, we have kids come in and uh, we're able to take them around and make it uh, friendly for them. Uh, you know, we give them uh, balloons uh, from our floral department. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a cool way to help uh, create that uh, relationship between uh, the kids. Um, and we're able to contact, most of the parents come with them. So we're able to make, build that relationship through the kids to their parents to where we can get them in their store and shop. Um, can I ask a couple questions? Absolutely. So, so how far in advance do you, does the company plan their events? Their events? Uh -huh. uh, depending on when it falls in the month. Uh, usually, usually about a month out. Uh, we have, uh, depending on uh, the store manager, um, ho holidays are a little bit different. The holidays, we're usually planning two months out and saying, hey, you know, this is what we did versus last year. We get reports that show what we did last year versus projections of what we'll, uh, we think are going to be uh, doing during those times. Uh, but events like that, we're usually planning out about a month out. Um, if it's at the beginning of the month, uh, we might, we're going to be planning that out probably in the middle or at the beginning or the middle of the month of the previous month. And how, how, uh, how do you get the word out about those upcoming meetings? Flyers, we, edu we tell, we educate our uh, cashiers, hey, let our customers know uh, that we're going to be providing this at the beginning of the month. And we advertise that a lot based on TV, uh, newspaper, ads especially. We'll let them know. Um, when uh, they're going to be, we're going to be providing that. I see a lot on your Facebook page too. Yeah, absolutely. Social media, Facebook, uh, and if a if a store, uh, Twitter is another one. If a store, if it's uh, specific to that store, uh, we'll still promote it on Twitter or Facebook, but we'll let them know uh, the location. Hey, if you're shopping at our store in Johnson City uh, at North Run Street uh, today, we're going to be having Kids Day. Uh, we advertising through social media, uh, educating our customers or our customers through the cashiers, uh, managers, all that. Uh, we try and uh, provide that um, through those uh, services. Okay, and so with your customer service representatives, what is the required training for them? Um, really, what we want to do is we, we have uh, fast tracks where they're able to see. Uh, on a computer, uh, role playing. Uh, they're able to see on a computer uh, people interacting with their customers. Uh, our best practices are our fast tracks where we educate them on the computer uh, what we expect. But uh, I feel and I think uh, our, our successful uh, store managers feel that in order to uh, let the cashiers and their employees know. Uh, best practices, the only way you're going to do it is to go through the experience of doing it. And so, so, do you have um, monthly meetings, quarterly meetings, or, or how do you with, with the company, you communicate with your, with your people to, weekly. to make sure that they are projecting the message that you want your business to? Weekly. weekly. Uh, every, um, on, most store managers have their department heads on Monday. Uh, that way, uh, usually our, our new programs might roll out on the Wednesday, like our new ad. So when we have those department head meetings, that store manager is responsible for communicating that information to that department head. And in return, that department head goes back to their department and educates uh, their associates on uh, the process or the upcoming events and promotions. And if it, it's important, really important on the on the front end because that's the first first place where a customer comes in. It's the last place where they uh, shop in their store. So uh, it's really invaluable to educate our cashiers and our front end managers uh, 
and our head cashier is responsible for relaying that message to them. Uh, but we do it on a weekly basis. A weekly basis. So, so if you have um, an irate customer, do you all, does the store manager discuss it with all of the department managers and then the department manager discuss, you know, do, the, do you, are you that detailed or do you just? I am. I'm going to discuss it. Hey, we had this issue. Or I, I might not do the whole department uh, in the department meeting, but uh, I would uh, bring that department head in, in my office and discuss about that. Because um, if it's really bad, I wouldn't want everybody else to know. I might try and address it at the meeting in a, in a more broad, general manner. But uh, if it's specific to that department, uh, I'm going to bring that department head in and discuss, hey, we had this issue. Uh, I'm going to ask them, hey, how do you want to fix it? And see what they say. And then from there, uh, brainstorm and try and come up with the right solution. And so if you see customers in your store, and we all do, that are doing things that you know they shouldn't be doing, I don't know, let's just say eating the grapes or, yeah, or something. How do you, I, you know, I reach your <laughs> How do you, like, do you just let that go? Or uh, how do you deal with all that? Oh, we don't want lawyers involved. You kind of just swallow your pride. I mean, depending on how severe it is, uh, you know, if it's a shoplifter and they're uh, they're stealing, uh, you know, a product, then you know, we have uh, you know our procedures to, to handle that. Obviously, we're going to have our managers handling that. Or uh, you know, obviously, if there's a big guy or that's working in the meat department, we're going to say, hey, this guy's a little big. We might need your help on this one. Uh, but as far as customers with, um, that are kind of just, you know, I guess acting up a little bit or they might take a grape off the salad bar, uh, you kind of just swallow your pride, like I said, especially with the, uh, when parents bring their kids in and, you know, they're running around and all that. It's a... Uh, there's, there's nothing you can do. You just, you just smile. Right. Smile. Okay, but that's what we all in small business experience is, is those, those, I call it unruly parents. You know, oh, yeah. not unruly kids because it's, it, you know, I, I call it unruly parents. But, but we experience that. We experience rude uh, clients who are, you know, Demanding. Oh yeah, and that's why that's that was like you know the, the the customer is always right. Yes, you want to stay firm and tr stay true to your belief. And what I would uh, what I would suggest on that is if you have like a rude customer like that, you got to stand firm with what you believe, and you can't hesitate. If you're in your mind and you say it, you, you can't have that hesitant uh, feeling. Whatever you go with, go with it. Go with your gut and stick to it. And that's the reason why I like the, they have the cookies club, because when right. I'm doing my uh, grocery shopping, oh, yeah. go to the bakery down the lake, get the kids a cookie, and I can get my shopping. Do you all still give away free balloons to our In the floor department, kids. yes. We, uh, we do them. have we uh, free balloons that uh, we provide for uh, the kids. So basically what you're saying is you try to entertain the kids as they come <laughs> in and, and divert some of that problem. Doing the little thing. Uh -huh. Yep. Well, yeah. diverting the kids and making a big sign for the the grown-ups to the same time. We got this on the bed. <laughs> well, well, I mean, there's actually the strawberries was a big thing. A lot of, uh, a cool thing that I, at the uh, last store that I was just at is, and I, they became so popular that we only have uh, one or two of them left. And, you know, they became so popular with the kids that I'd imagine that they just went home with it or what. But uh, we had little small kid buggies. And that was a great way to help yes. uh, keep them... Uh, entertained and they were able to take in the customer or the shopping experience themselves where they wanted to bring it up to the register uh, I had a couple experiences where they made their parent wait until they got everything out of their buggy and then they said okay you can go now so so do you have um, do you have within the let's say the department head or the managers do you have strategy <coughs> planning sessions where you talk about issues that are frustrating everybody, and then they plan a, 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 a strategy on how to address that? Uh, yes. Uh, so we have the store level aspect where 
uh, your, your managers and your department heads are formulating plans to uh, come up with best practices in uh, cases like that uh, or effective managing. Uh, but we also, uh, our department heads and uh, new, new assistant managers, uh, they go through a management class. Um, it lasts, uh, it's one time a month for about seven or eight months. Uh, and we, we have corporate trainers come down and teach a class all day. And it's going to cover everything from communication, problem solving. You're going to do role playing for cases like that. They have a script of how you're supposed to act or what your role is, and uh, we're able to uh, effectively uh, have uh, our managers, when they get in that situation, uh, we hope that they're going to be able to provide the best solution. So do you have your best practices in writing in a manual? Yes. Uh, uh, whenever you're first hired, we have a policy and procedure manual for each department that's going to cover everything from um, your uniform attire, what the job description is uh, for uh, that um, department, uh, or the department manager, your uh, associates within that department. We also have, a, it gives a detailed description on, for example, in our meat department, um, you want to have your, uh, you got a freezer and a cooler and you want to, it provides you with answers on what those temperatures should be. And if that temperature uh, goes above that and starts warming, the procedures to follow up and how to, how to get that fixed so uh, we can provide the best product available. It's going to cover a lot in that manual. Do your, um, do, is, does the company um, encourage managers and um, um, I don't know even up to the corporate level do they encourage community service as in you know going outside the store clubs Kiwanis mm -hmm. clubs uh, oh, yeah. I mean the chambers of commerce they they want you to be involved uh, in the community uh, whether it's doing something with Food City at, say, race night or uh, a community cleanup. Uh, they, they want you to be involved. They want their store managers especially to be effective in the community because, uh, you know, you're reaching out to them. You're able to meet with them outside of the store, maybe on a committee. And, uh, you know, you're able to you know, talk about your services and trying to uh, attract that customer to your business. So uh, it's very, very important to be involved in the community, whether, um, whether you're, you volunteer to be a coach, whether uh, it's on the Rotary Club or uh, Committee of the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, being involved in the community, uh, it really uh, creates a, a good impression for you to where you're able to attract customers in the store or wherever. How many of you all have employees that you manage? And how often do you get together with them, you think, that, and you talk about these, like, you know, talk about issues that may come up that, you know, during the week you're busy, but do you get, do you get together once a week, once a month, once a quarter? That was kind of the point I was trying to, even if, you, even if you're not the employee, even if you're the employee and not the employer, does your employer communicate what they expect oh, yeah. on a regular basis because it sounds like to me you all communicate once a week. Right, through our department heads. And if something pops up throughout that week, uh, we get an email from uh, our bosses. Uh, you know, I, I usually try and get that out right away and communicate that. So if something pops up, um, then I'll address that. But uh, we do a weekly department head meeting where uh, we're addressing. Um, new promotions, uh, upcoming uh, or previous sales. Uh, we're, we're constantly communicating uh, the, the success of the business or if we need to try and change something to make that certain area of our business successful, how are we going to fix it and coming up with solutions uh, to address that matter. And new outreach goals. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, 
reaching out to our community, like I said, is something that we've been able to build from one store to with maybe 20 associates to a company 50 years later with over 13,000 employees and over 100 stores. And so, and so they attribute that to, to their growth to community outreach. Community outreach. It's their, it's their number one uh, uh, pride, or it's our number one thing that we try and separate ourselves uh, from their competition to try and gain that trust uh, for those customers. And, and with Knoxville, uh, with their stores down there, with all the competition that's coming down there with uh, our Whole, Whole Foods is opening up uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, Kroger, Publix, Earth Fair. Um, you know, something that's only that's going to be able to make or separate us from that uh, competition is providing great service. Letting them know, hey, your your time and your business is very valuable to me, and I want you to keep coming back. So, customer service and reaching out to those people to try and get them in your store to where they can see. The service that you provide, and that's going to, I think, separate them or separate yourself or your company, your business, your store. Uh, it's going to separate it from the competition. Okay. And so, just to, you know, I always like to focus on the problems that you have. I'm a problem solver, but so, so when we let's just say you do, you have a great manager who understands the, the numbers and the, in, in your case, the job in, in, in a service industry, you know, let's say it's, it's, a, it's your top insurance salesperson or your top hairdresser or whatever, but, but, but they're not customer service oriented and they're really not good with community. How, how do you deal with that? Well, uh, like, like any good thing when it comes to customer service or anything, I, I, you know, providing uh, something, uh, it's going to take time, especially service. And I've seen so many cases in our uh, business where we hire uh, a high schooler, or it, does, it, can be a, it can be a 16-year-old or it can be a 32-year-old, where they really don't have that, um, that personality just yet. But by being there every day and continuing the practice, we're able to help continue to push them to drive, uh, to make sure that uh, they're reaching out to that customer uh, and giving them the best service that they can provide. And I, I, it just takes time, to, uh, is what I've seen. So it's education. It's education and time and continuing them to push them to be the best. I think as a leader, you have to, like, you gotta set high standards for your associates when you hire them. You gotta say, hey, uh, we're in the customer service, we're in the people industry. And in order to uh, get where you want to be, I'm going to need you to do this. And if you're not there, I'm going to continue to work with you and push you and drive you because I see it in you. I see it uh, in this interview. I think by uh, staying persistent, you're going to be able to become the best employee that you can possibly be. So continue then to educate them. Tyler, i got two questions, but the same subject regarding social media. You touched on it a little bit. Uh, one, do you all have someone within Food City that monitors anything that's being said about the uh, oh, yeah. stores and social media? Then, then on the other side of that, what is your policy if you have staff putting negative things, posts on social media regarding the store or a customer, but it relates to their job? What is your policy? I mean, do you have zero tolerance? Or, I mean, how do you do it? Because I think that is becoming critical to no matter what kind of business. If it's one, two, and, two or three employees to a thousand employees is handling that. It's, it's uh, very critical. And we do have a uh, IT department and information technology as well as, uh, and our, our security watches that as well. So we do have departments that monitor that. And uh, on that second question, uh, depending on the severity of that post, um, that can result in, uh, all the way up to termination. So is that in your policies? It is okay. in your policy to, to be careful uh, with what you post on social media. Uh, 
And I think it depends more on the severity. If it's posting a lot of negative stuff, uh, the more likely that that uh, associate is going to be terminated because you don't want to put someone in your store that's serving your business and they're not happy to be there and they're writing negative stuff about you. And they're, going to, they're not going to educate the customer on what we provide. They're just going to go through the motions. And that's not something that, uh, as a manager, that we're looking for. Uh, so uh, that, that, depending on the severity of it, um, that can result up to termination. Do you have these employees sign something to deal with confidentiality? Because whereas before in a situation like that, you would never think about customer confidentiality. But now, with social media. With social media. and. I, I didn't get a little in terms bit. of them talking specifically badly about the customer. Oh yeah, and that, that's part of uh, what you sign uh, whenever you sign up with Food City. That's going to be a very uh, uh, important key component uh, when they sign that uh, contract or when they sign on with Food City. Um, there, there is going to be something about confidentiality and making sure that they're not uh, posting anything uh, negative because, like I said, that can result up to termination if we feel is it, that it's severe. That's why those policies are critical when you hire someone that that's the only leg you really, well, we have a term. It, it's really that important to make that. sure that uh, your new employee, that, that they read them. A lot of them, when they just see something, they, and they're, they're just signing right away without actually knowing what they're actually signing. So it, it's important that you educate them, make sure that you answer any of their questions. Um, and that they understand what all is being, or what, what they're signing. And Food City has a dress code too, right? For oh yeah, for uh, for like every even as far as as it, even as far as how high of a heel somebody can wear, like high heel shoes. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. They uh, we do have a dress code. Uh, we're gonna um, cashiers are gonna be wearing khaki pants, uh, a Food City polo, red or blue. Uh, they have the option during the winter time of uh, buying a jacket. Uh, but we want to, we make sure it's food city oriented. Um, dress code is very important. We, if they come in, their name badge is really important too, because if they come in and they don't have it to sign in, uh, that, that head cashier reserves the right to say, hey, uh, either you're not working today because you weren't responsible, or uh, go home and get it. Um, so it, the name badge is a very important part of, of our dress code. Uh, because otherwise, uh, when, when we have situations where they don't have their name badge and they're not able to sign in uh, at the time clock, uh, that can create the opportunity where uh, we might have an associate uh, try and cheat time, uh, write down hours that they're not really working. Uh, so it's a very important part of our, uh, our dress code to where we can uh, monitor their times uh, and, uh, and allow the customer to know who they're going to be working with today. When they come up to the cashier or at the register, uh, we, uh, we say, hi, my name is Tyler. Uh, did you find everything you were looking for? And um, with that, you know, it creates that personal touch uh, for our customers. To go back to her question about responding to uh, on social media, there's so many different areas like you know, you could have someone on Twitter put something, you could have someone put something on Facebook, or maybe even in Yelp. Do you have someone in your IT department that actually responds to all those, monitors to see who has put a review on and then respond to it? Um, I don't have a direct answer on uh, how they respond, uh, whether it's through a, a private message on Facebook or a, a, a direct message on Twitter. Uh, we do have someone monitoring that constantly to where uh, that process, I would imagine, we're probably looking up that name and try and um, tying it in with their value card number. That way we're able to uh, maybe get their phone number as well as uh, uh, their address and maybe either sending a letter or uh, giving them a phone call and saying how can we change or service, what did you experience that you didn't like to where we can change that and make that better. And that would be from the corporate level, level not from your individual. Right, and that that will probably go, uh, we can probably do both ways. What we're probably going to do is we're going to have someone from corporate uh, communicate to that customer as well as what store it was, and we're going to have that store manager communicate them as well, or communicate to that person as well, because the store manager is the most important position in their company. They see our customers every day, and so we're going to have someone from both places, the, the corporate level 
as well as at their store level communicating to that customer. All right, uh, in conclusion, uh, I hope that the, the core values were able to educate you, educate you on uh, important tools for customer service. Um, welcoming the customer, it's very important that you start with that smile and you greet them and make them feel like they're very, very important because they are, they're the lifeline of your business and they should be treated as such. Um, you want to listen, problem solve, and communicate all important steps when it comes to uh, making sure that our employees are, are educated on our services, as well as problem solving when it comes with an issue or a complaint with their associates, uh, and sincere appreciation for thanking them for their service that is a very, very important step. And I will tell you that writing handwritten notes will go a long way and helping that customer feel appreciative. Uh, teaching the standard, uh, you know, with the best practices that you're, uh, that you're wanting to implement to how you want to run your company, uh, you want to be able to have that uh, written in stone to where you do make that higher. That's the expectation that's followed. And uh, knowing the service that, that you provide and knowing more than that customer. Uh, you want to be able to help educate them and, and know it like, like um, without having any issues, uh, and the the customer service culture at Food City, uh, and what what we provide to not only our customers but the people in our community, and uh, the importance of being involved with the community and the personal service that we provide in our stores to the customers, and. Uh, Lastly, I want to I want to end on another quote. I'm a, I'm a big proponent of uh, Twitter. I think it's the fastest way to get news. And I follow a, a guy by the name of John Gordon, who, if y'all are on Twitter, he's a motivational speaker, and he's all the time uh, right or he's all the time tweeting about uh, giving motivational tips uh, to help have a successful business. And I highly recommend it. And he. Uh, he had a quote that really hit home with me that you, you want to invest in relationships. Not because you want or need something, but because you want to build something. And I'd imagine with your startup, you are wanting to build something. And that investing in relationships and that personal service will go a long way in helping you reach your ultimate goal. Uh, thank you for your attention, and do you all have any more questions? Thank you so much, Tyler. We appreciate you coming today, and, and for one last second, does anybody have any questions about customer service with Tyler? Okay, well, thank you. Well, I don't have a, as an assistant manager, I don't have a card, so if you all if do want to get in touch with me, uh, by email. Uh, it's T7 Bailey, B A I L E Y, uh, at gmail.com. And I would be more than happy to answer your question about customer service. So we appreciate you and we appreciate all of the things that Food City has done to help us. If you all don't know, Food City also printed all of our business challenge flyers uh, along with the new knowledge dates on the back of it. And, and we were able to use those. They, they printed full color for us. And so we were able to use all of that to, to start and promote these classes. And some of the things that you have spoke about today, I think, are maybe future topics. Um, what we want you all to do on these evaluation sheets is not only tell us what you liked and didn't like, but what future topics you would like to see. because. We are in the process of um, thinking about our plans for the continued new knowledge classes. So, in, yes, Ms. In two weeks is a social media class, and we have a consultant that is a social media consultant out of Johnson City that helps small business, and, you know, maybe bringing that up, the topic about policies would be good, and that's in two weeks. Right. Now, uh, so, next week's class is doing business with Commonwealth, and it'll be here. 
at uh, 12 o'clock, then our own Sandy Ratliff will be presenting that class. And the business challenge winners uh, will be uh, named, announced, I should say, on Thursday, March the 19th at 7.30 a.m. at the uh, Chamber of Commerce breakfast. Jason Berry will present the IDA award for um, startup and uh, Ed Morgan will present the Avenue Award for expanding business. So please come to that. Please stay in touch with us. Watch what we're doing. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you'd like for us to do better. If you want to be on the committee, send us your email address and we'll certainly involve you in, in some of our planning processes. Or if you want to uh, present a session. Or if you want to present a session. Or if you know somebody that you think would be good at presenting a session. Let us know. We, we are here to serve the business community. So with that, I will thank you and hope you have a great day.